On behalf of Netnology, welcome to another demonstration segment of the Cisco Be Boundless initiative. Cisco is doubling down on integrating cross-domain architectures which address customer business needs. These simple cross-domain integration examples span Cisco SDX and cloud architectures and solutions while having a laser focus on security, analytics, and automation without technology barriers. In other words, one part of Cisco making another part of Cisco even better. Be Boundless. Netnology is one of the top integrator partners and a Be Boundless champion, working hand-in-hand -hand with Cisco to make Be Boundless a reality. Today we are going to talk about Cisco Umbrella and Cisco SD-WAN integration. We will follow up our presentation with a short demo to demonstrate Cisco Umbrella and Cisco SD-WAN solution live in action. Cisco's SD-WAN and Umbrella integration enables customers to deploy Umbrella across their SD-WAN footprint to hundreds of devices in minutes. The integration provides instant DNS layer protection against threats such as malware, ransomware, and C2 callbacks. Customers can benefit from cost savings and improved performance of Direct Internet Access, or DIA, at branch offices without sacrificing security or the burden of managing devices individually. Cisco SD-WAN and Umbrella enables customers to secure users wherever they access the Internet, while providing a streamlined user experience and simplifying management. For additional granularity and control, Administrators can create policies and view reports on a per-VPN basis. Policies defined in Umbrella provide an enhanced level of security to traffic destined towards SaaS applications using Umbrella DNS. Based on the policy configuration, traffic traversing the SD-WAN environment will be subjected to Umbrella policy. Umbrella policy falls under the definition of centralized policy. This policy resides on the vSmart controller. The vSmart controller provides inbound and outbound policy constructs to manipulate routing information, access control, segmentation, extranets, and service chaining. In Cisco Umbrella, policies are created through the policy wizard, which lets you set the level of protection and security, content access, and logging that are applied to each of your identities. The network is used as an identity and is defined by the public IP space. There are some prerequisites when enabling and integrating Cisco SD-WAN and Cisco Umbrella solution. We have to make sure we understand the device profile requirements, whether it is vEdge or C-Edge, ISR43XX and above platform. This particular integration example is using Cisco vEdge devices. We have to make sure we have our public network activated in Cisco Umbrella. Without an active network in Umbrella, policies will not work. And the last prerequisite, we have to make sure Cisco SD-WAN is running 18.4.1 or higher code release. If we are running a code version below 18.4.1, Cisco Umbrella integration will not work. In this demo, we will show traffic going from branch location to Internet and traffic from branch location to SaaS application, such as Cisco WebEx and Office 365. Cisco vSmart Controller will control the traffic flow for applications in and out of the branch location based on the policies created, while Cisco Umbrella will determine what applications are allowed or denied based on the policies defined in Cisco Umbrella. For the assumptions, we need to make sure Cisco SD-WAN and Cisco Umbrella are working together nicely. We have to have an active Umbrella account, and we have to have all the required licenses. We also need to make sure Cisco SD-WAN is fully configured and connected to all the SaaS applications as mentioned in the previous slide. As we mentioned before, Cisco SD-WAN is running 18.4.1 and above code release at minimum. Having said that, we are now going to move on to the live demo portion. We want to start by creating policy on Cisco vSmart Controller. All of the policies that we define in Cisco vSmart Controller for Cisco SD-WAN solution we create on Cisco vManage. However, those policies are pushed from Cisco vSmart and applied from Cisco vSmart Controller. The very first step we are going to do is create a policy. For any policy to work, when we are creating a policy, we need to have a list of VPNs and sites. VPN is basically security and the segmentation piece of Cisco SD-WAN solution. 
All of the traffic that is leaving the remote sites or entering the remote sites is segmented into different VPNs. In order for umbrella policy to work, we have to let the policy know on which VPNs we want to apply the policy. Similarly, we can pick and choose on which sites we want to apply those umbrella policies. A site can only be represented by the numerical number. Once we have our VPNs created and we have our sites created, we can go ahead and start creating a centralized umbrella policy. We are going to create a policy and call it umbrella underscore Cisco underscore SAS policy. We are going to use the same name as the description since we're just doing a demonstration. Our default policy action is drop. We are going to change it to accept. We're going to create a sequence here and we are going to create a custom policy. When we are creating the DNS policy for Cisco Umbrella, there are two components to it. One is the request. The second is the response. The very first component that we are going to create is a DNS request. This is any traffic that is leaving the branch location trying to go out to the internet. We are going to redirect that traffic towards Umbrella. So let's change the action from drop to accept and redirect it towards the Umbrella IP address. Then we will save our policy. The second rule that we are going to create in conjunction is for traffic that is coming back from the internet. That will be the response. We click on response and again change the action to accept. And we will redirect that DNS response towards host this time. We will then save our data policy over here. And this is our first umbrella policy. We are going to go ahead and apply our policy to sites and VPNs. We will name the policy umbrella underscore VPN underscore sites. We will use the same name as the description since this is optional. Let's go ahead and create our VPN list. We already have a site list, umbrella underscore site. We will apply policy to umbrella underscore service underscore VPN. We will add these two parameters and our policy is ready for preview. This is our basic umbrella policy that we have. We are matching all of the traffic that is leaving any of the remote locations, sending it towards umbrella DNS. Similarly, when the traffic is coming back, we are sending it to umbrella first and then we are redirecting it towards host after it passes through Cisco umbrella. Since this is centralized policy, it will be applied and activated on Cisco Umbrella. We are applying this policy on site 100 to 600 and on Surface VPN 1 through 511. We will go ahead and save, and now we have our policy created. In order for it to work properly, we have to activate the policy. We'll go ahead and activate the policy on vSmart Controller. When we try to activate the policy, it lets us know that it's going to activate the policy on this vSmart controller, which is represented by the system IP. Activate the policy at this time. Once it's activated, our first step is complete. After we accomplish that step, we are going to log into Cisco Umbrella and create our rules for blocking social media traffic and only allowing SaaS application, such as Cisco WebEx. Now that the policy is created, we want to validate that the policy is activated. When we see the word true, it means the policy is functional and policy is activated. At this time, we can go ahead and log in to Cisco Umbrella. When we log into Cisco Umbrella, we will get an overview screen, which basically shows us how many active networks we have, how many network requests have come in, and how many of those requests are blocked. As you remember, in the beginning of the presentation, we talked about allowing Cisco.com domain and blocking social media websites such as Facebook and Twitter. In order for Umbrella to be able to monitor policy, it has to have the public IP address of the active network. When we click on the active network, we can see the data center IP and that it is showing as active. If the subnet, which is my public IP address, is not active, the policy will not function. The policy will not work whether it is Cisco Umbrella or whether it is Umbrella policy on vSmart Controller. We have to make sure the policy status is showing active before we can truly apply the policies and monitor the activity. 
When we go to Policies, we can see we have different policies created, and we see the words applied to all identities. If you remember from the earlier conversation, an identity is referred to the network. We are applying multiple policies to the network. We have a policy where we are blocking social media websites, Facebook.com and Twitter.com, and we have a global allow list where we are allowing Cisco.com. If we have to do validation to check if the policy is truly working, we are going to go to our remote host and log in to check if the policy is working. The first step for validation is to go to the welcome screen for OpenDNS, welcome.opendns.com. If you see the check mark, it means policy is applied, policy is functional, and our network is monitored by Cisco Umbrella. To validate our policies that we have created and see if they are working, we will go to cisco.com first to make sure that domain is allowed, and we see that we can browse cisco.com. We will also go to cisco.webex.com and see that this can also be accessed. Now we will try to go to facebook.com and see if we can access it. We get the message, didn't connect, potential security issue. If we click Advance just to see if we can bypass the security threat, there is no way to bypass it. It doesn't let me accept the security risk and move on. With some of the other potential security threats, we know that when there is a certificate error or when the certificate has expired, Firefox gives you an option to accept the security risk and move on. Here we see that even though we are trying to click on Advanced and trying to accept the security risk and move on, Cisco Umbrella will not allow it. Similarly, when we try to log into Twitter.com, we get the same message, didn't connect, potential security issue. At this time, we are not allowed to log in to Twitter.com. Even if we click on Advanced, we see the exact same message reading, No, we are not allowed to proceed to the website. For further details of this integration example, please refer to the Step-by-Step -step Integration Guide. This concludes our demo. From all of us here at Netnology, thank you for watching.